when you think of the most unstoppable land animals on earth. Your mind probably jumps to one animal, the African elephant, and for good reason. We're talking about the biggest land animal alive today, capable of flipping over cars, snapping down trees, and humbling hippos. So yeah, elephants don't play around. Ah, but there's a problem. Nothing alive today can really challenge them. No lions, no rhinos, no animals really even try. They're like kings in a land without rivals. So if we want to test the elephant's true limits, we have to look in the past. And I mean way back. If we want a real carnivorous challenger, we need to bring out the dinosaurs. And let's start with perhaps the most iconic one, the Tyrannosaurus Rex. The largest land carnivore to ever walk the earth. A creature so terrifying, so legendary, it's basically nature's version of a final boss. The universe basically had to throw an asteroid at it in order to take it down. So yeah, today's video is going to be insane. We're analyzing who would win in a fight between an African elephant and a Tyrannosaurus Rex. This is the largest land animal alive versus the largest land carnivore to ever live. And if y'all think this is some complete stop on either side, then you're wrong. Both the elephant and T-Rex have some tricks up their sleeves that honestly might impress you, and perhaps you didn't even think about. And guess what? The winner really might not be who you'd expect. So you gotta stick around to hear that, so stay locked in. But before we begin, I would appreciate if y'all subscribed, liked this video, and commented what y'all think. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm and would really mean a lot to me. And if we reach 100,000 subscribers, I will do a special video for y'all, whether it's me doing tug of war against a big cat, testing my strength against the gorillas, or something truly incredible like that. Sounds fun? So let's achieve that. But enough of this self promo. Let's lay down some ground rules for this fight, shall we? Let's say both the African bush elephant and T Rex are angry adults in their primes and want to duke it out. So no running away or anything like that. And where shall this battle take place? Let's say this brawl is in an open field like a savanna. So equal terrain here, okay? All right, sounds good. Now let's find out who wins between a T-Rex and an African elephant. Size and physique. The Tyrannosaurus Rex. It's perhaps the most iconic dinosaur of all time. It's in movies, games, books, you name it. It's basically Hollywood royalty at this point, but don't get it twisted. This wasn't some fantasy monster. This thing was very real and was an absolute nightmare for anything breathing during the late Cretaceous in North America. In fact, its scientific name literally translates to the Tyrant Lizard King. And wouldn't you have both Tyrant and King in your name? You know this thing was a beast. Okay, and let's watch a myth right now. The T-Rex actually had great eyesight despite what films might have you believe. In fact, it had front-facing binocular vision with a field of view similar to a lion or a human. And modern estimates say that they likely had vision similar to a hawk. So pretty solid on the whole seeing aspect. And it had to be. It roamed around the ancient plains of North America with a certain Thanos aura to it. The T-Rex was the apex predator of its region and hunted dangerous armored herbivores like Triceratops tops, large hadrosaurs like Edamontosaurus, and if it was feeling extra daring, maybe even an Ankylosaurus. But yeah, the Rex was basically built for war. You see, unlike many other theropods, the T-Rex was really robust. It was basically like the strongmen of the carnivorous dinosaurs. And it had to be. It was in a dinosaur arms race. Its prey was getting bulkier, more armored, and more dangerous. I mean, taking down a Triceratops or a large hadrosaur was no easy feat, so it had to adapt a more power based build as its prey got more armored and durable. But this makes you wonder, just how large was the Tyrannosaurus? Well, recent depictions put the average adult around 12 feet tall at the hip, 40 feet in length, and clocks in between 6 to 8 and a half tons. So this was a bus sized monster. But perhaps you're used to hearing about some of the largest T-Rexes, such as Sue or Scotty, with their weight when fully grown being projected to be about 9 to 11 tons. Oh yeah, by the way, the reason for their whole weight range is because it really really depends on who you ask and how much you scale them to. But yeah, you bet a carnivore of that size would surely put alarm bells up for any herbivore. Well, that's if you aren't a sauropod. Now, part of what makes the T-Rex such a biological anomaly is a strange but effective build. It had long, powerful legs, tiny arms that would honestly make you question if a gorilla could beat it in an arm wrestling match, and a monstrous five-foot skull. And just for reference, the skull of Sue alone weighed about 600 pounds. That's roughly the weight of a grizzly bear. Yeah, it 
Ben had a bear-sized head, but are you ready for the twist as to why it would be such a nightmare for an elephant? Despite all that size, the Rex was actually surprisingly very agile. You see, thanks to a combination of low rotational inertia, wide hips, and a digit-to-grade leg structure, this dinosaur could actually pivot and turn rather great for an animal of its size. That attribute likely came from adapting to outmaneuvering charges from its prey. And just one more thing about the T-Rex. It had great stamina. So while the T-Rex wasn't really the fastest, with current estimates saying it topped out at about 17 miles an hour, it was great at sustained movements. So clearly the Rex was an absolute unit. But now let's talk about its challenger, the African Bush Elephant. It's the undisputed heavyweight champion of the land animal kingdom. These creatures walk around the savannas like they own the place. And honestly, they do. Once they hit adulthood, they have no natural predators and pretty much bully other animals around because they simply can. Even hippos don't tempt their fate with an elephant. And by the way, a bull elephant in must is just about one of the scariest animals you can encounter. Yeah, their testosterone increases about 60 times their normal amount and have the temperament of Vegeta. And by the way, they don't mind showing off their strength. In fact, elephants are so incredibly powerful that they've been known to easily manhandle cars around, knock over trees, and even toss around rhinos with ease. And just to add to that, a bull African elephant charging at full speed of 7 meters per second is calculated to produce around 147,000 joules of kinetic energy. Which, by the way, is about the same as getting hit by a sedan car going 33 miles an hour. In other words, it would almighty push a human or basically any other land animal in its path. So this begs the question, just how big is the African bush elephant? What is a T-Rex working with? Well, fully grown bulls average around 6 to 7 tons and reach up to 11 feet tall when fully grown. So yeah, that's about approaching the average T-Rex in size, with maybe a little less weight. But now let's talk legends, because the largest recorded African bush elephant weighed in at 10 and a half tons and stood 13 feet tall. Yeah, that's about the same size as the largest T-Rexes like Sue. But size is only one aspect. Aspect. You gotta take into account how these things are built. You see, the elephant skull is crafted like a battering ram. It's thick, dense, and evolved specifically for shock absorption. So perfect for ramming other elephants during fights. And by the way, their skulls can get up to six inches thick in certain regions. In fact, the elephant skull is so dense that they've been known to survive rifle bullets and keep charging. And that same bone density and quadrupedal stance also makes them incredibly stable and hard to knock down. But wait, there's more. There's a secret defense mechanism the elephant is packing in its metaphorical trunk. That being its mammalian build. You see, unlike the T-Rex, which had hollow air-filled bones, elephants have solid mammal bones, making the bones not only more stress-resistant, but also enables them to pack denser muscle and stronger ligaments. Hey, and another perk of being a mammal is superior muscle control and regulation. Elephants would theoretically be able to make more precise movements and just control their power distribution distribution better. And given that they have a more compact build, this may prove troublesome for the average T-Rex. Especially noting that there really isn't a huge weight disparity. A structure is only one part of the equation. How these creatures fight and their weaponry arguably plays a more important role in this confrontation. After all, it's a fight. So, how would these two even fight each other? And what are they really bringing to the table? Well, this brings me on to my last point, which is weaponry and fighting IQ. All right, so when it comes to weaponry and how these creatures fight, no doubt both of them are very powerful. But of course, they are built completely different. And thus, it makes this comparison quite interesting. But let's start with the T-Rex, shall we? Nature basically stacked all the Tyrannosaurus' attack points into one massive bone-crunching bite. This thing had a head up to five feet long. And it wasn't just big, it was robust, dense, and engineered like a biological hydraulic press. A human would basically be like a protein bar. And yeah, the T-Rex had one of the strongest strongest bites out there. It get chomped down between 8,000 and 12,000 PSI. Just for reference, that's between 50 to 80 times stronger than a human's bite. But even though that tips the scales, just how effective was its bite? Well, T-Rex teeth weren't really sharp like a lion's or fine edge like a shark's. These were thick, banana-sized teeth that were conical with serrated edges and a reinforced base. In fact, they were actually differentiated, with some parts being better for crunching and other parts being better for tearing. But here's a thing. They weren't made to slice or sink directly into the muscle like a big cat's. They were made to crush, 
track and hold. Basically, kind of similar to a crocodile's bite and effectiveness. This means that the T-Rex would have amazing gripping slash crushing power and would use its head to try and manipulate whatever it grabbed onto, such as the frill of the Triceratops, and perhaps try to off-balance their prey by dragging it down or dislocate slash sever the bone. And here's the thing, the T-Rex would probably not have great lateral resistance when it grips. So perhaps a large animal sliding its limb sideways out of the Rex's mouth might have been the move if it wanted to escape. But with that said, it uses bite tactically. In fact, fossil evidence suggests that when T-Rexes fought each other, they aim towards the snout and upper body region. And this carries out when they hunt. But let's not forget, the T-Rex was no stranger to taking on elephant-sized prey, whether it was a triceratops or facing down a large hadrosaur. But don't get it twisted. Those battles were not easy, clean takedowns. They were wars of attrition. So the T-Rex didn't likely sprint into battle expecting a quick kill. It played the long game by chipping away, baiting, and dodging attacks. And remember, thanks to its anatomy, it could pivot, sidestep, and reposition like a heavyweight ballerina. It knew how to move and maintain distance. Now, the T-Rex also could maybe headbutt with its skull, but given the elephant's build, I doubt it would be terribly effective. Oh, and speaking of large animals that love to charge in and fight back, how does an African bush elephant stack up? Well, let's start with a pretty obvious pro, its intelligence. Elephants are among the smartest animals on the planet. They have great problem solving skills, good spatial memory, and can even strategize during confrontations. They can plan and read body language. And in confrontations, that would be a great asset to have. So perhaps the elephant could maybe see more openings and adapt better than the Rex. Now, I know there was a study that said the T-Rex had a brain that was similar to a baboon's in neuron density, but before you think this thing was solving Rubik's cubes, let's clarify. A lot of that brain was dedicated to smell and motor control, and likely not for high IQ problem solving. But still, it wasn't some mindless beast. It had the sensory system and coordination to become an apex carnivore. But given how incredibly smart elephants are compared to modern animals, and millions of years of evolution on the dinosaur, the proboscan would likely have the ability to observe, assess, and adjust mid-conflict easier. That's great and everything, but now let's talk weaponry. Elephants support strong, ivory tusks that can reach up to six feet in length when fully grown. And unlike common belief, their main purpose isn't to gore, but rather to smack and gain leverage slash favorable positions. The tusks are basically used as leverage points in fights, along with whacking slash hitting their opponents. So perhaps the tusks aren't used to ram like the triceratops would with its horns, but rather to whack and smack their opponents around. But with that said, for the elephant, it's about control, asserting power, and destabilizing opponents. So Maybe if the elephant gets lucky, it could potentially off balance and make the T-Rex wobble slash trip. But that's a big if, because there's a catch. Elephants don't really fight creatures like a T-Rex. Adult males are usually at the top of their ecosystem. Once they're fully grown, nothing really messes with them for obvious reasons. You know, they don't really face any predators that are similar in size. And also, here's one more thing. They have a big blind spot. You see, elephants have eyes on the size of their heads, which means that their front-facing vision is limited. They often have to sway their massive heads in order to keep track what's ahead. And against a predator like a T-Rex, who has great binocular vision, it could be a problem. But is that enough? Could the T-Rex use its bone-crunching bite, raider agility, front-facing vision, and battle-tested instincts to bring down the elephant and get revenge for the dinosaurs? Or could the African elephant use its sturdier frame and greater intelligence to off-balance the Rex, throw it to the ground, and once again show why dinosaurs went extinct? Well, people, I think it's about time we determine a verdict. All right, we have our stats. So who wins in a fight between an African bush elephant and a Tyrannosaurus Rex? Well, given all the information presented, I would say the T-Rex would win in a fight. I mean, to me, it was kind of obvious from the get-go, but yeah, it won't be a quick victory, okay? But the T-Rex has a lot more going for it. First, it's actually used to attacking and bringing down animals that are about the size of an elephant, right? It faced off against the Triceratops and large Hadrosaurs. The elephant, on the other hand, is not used to fighting a predator similar in size. But secondly, I mean, the T-Rex his offense, that being its massive jaws, would be very troublesome for the elephant. Yeah, maybe the elephant could smack around the T-Rex with its tusks maybe a few times, but I don't think it's leaving any crippling wounds. The elephant's best strategy is to run in at the T-Rex and straight up try to go for a tackle, but given that the T-Rex had pretty good agility and dealt with the Triceratops, which basically did that same tactic, yeah, it would sidestep the elephant and probably constantly try to maintain its range, biting at the elephant's head, shoulder, maybe taking out the elephant's 
ear, making it bleed, and so on, okay? And the elephant would really have a hard time trying to do any meaningful damage to the T-Rex's thick hide and muscle, right? So yeah, the T-Rex could basically take down the elephant. But enough said. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like this video, and feel free to check out the rest of my content.